All right, hello there, and happy freaking new year. It's now 2020, so let's see. I have this video right quick. I already explained in the previous video right before this how to decide the final member of a team. And I basically was explaining how when you see a bracket, as you see right here, like I can actually move I can actually decide which matches I want to see in the bracket and stuff like that I know I can actually do that but I'm going to show you again in just a second so basically for this team right here let's pull up that team you can see right here for this team right here where you see the D and it says Rudin with the question mark right behind it that's going to be the final teammate and I did a league using 12 people from teams that lost and other people that wasn't utilizing or I forgot to put in it. And as you can see, it was 12 people. That's the arena. I already showed you that. We used the uh, team qualifier rules. I'm going to talk about that in a second anyway, so I'm going to bring that up. But this was the results of that tournament. There was a four-way tie with four people getting 16 points or eight wins because... I got it set up where there won't be a draw at all. It'll go to time decision if some people have the same amount of points. And we have a four-way tie with everybody having eight wins and three losses. So the game was gonna make them go into you know a turn. Whenever there's a tie, they just put them in a tournament and blah blah this blah blah this, that. So I was like, you know what? We're just gonna do another league with the exact same rules. Except for this time, we were going to do it a little bit different. The guy who they supposed to be replacing, Devastation. I want Devastation to be back in the fifth spot chance qualifiers for the MMA division. But, you know, I decided I decided that I'm not going to do that to him. I'm actually put him on the team. Like, hell, if his team wins, he'll be having the championship with them. But... I make him fight for it because I'm I don't really want him to do it but like if he's better than the five of these guys these other four guys then like might as well so let's show you this as you already know is the team coffers for the combatives championship rules and there you go you see it and now we can move on and the round of eight will also have the combatants qualifier, team qualifier rules as well. So, we got that on the hardest difficulty, and we can get started. Enjoy the first match. I'm going to do as many of these as I possibly can, so we probably get done like the first half of it and do the second half of the next video, because there's only three minutes per match. Enjoy. <laughs> And what I had done is I did a five-man league with him and the four other crafts or creator wrestlers I have that did it um, wasn't part of any division in the rankings or had a title or whatever wasn't part of none of the rankings or had titles or whatever. So like that's why. And instead of doing it with just the the 10 qualifier rules, I use the championship rules with those five because I knew the matches were going to be that damn good. And also, I did it off. I ain't recorded. So, like, and he was the one who, he ain't getting that one win, I don't believe. And I, and it was basically because, like, they went the whole five rounds and, like, 
almost every match I believe he was in, like, because he had four matches, he was, like, dominating the matches. But because of that, you know, blood stoppage thing, he kept on losing by blood stoppage. So I fixed that for him. Glad I did. And, like, he doesn't have, when he react to, vor react to blood, he's um aggressive or nothing. But, like, I got on there, he rarely bleeds now because, like, he was just bleeding so easily versus everybody. Everybody just kept on cutting him. I think, um, did somebody tap him? I don't think so. Did, did PKO tap him or was it, um, it was somebody who did leg submissions, I think. I think he lost to somebody by leg submissions. Was he a PKO or what's the other guy? Champ. Yeah, because Muay Thai, he does the leg kicks, and he also does leg submissions. Yeah, so, I can't remember. But yeah, he may be getting replaced. He's losing right now. So, oh, no, he's not. He's tied up again after that power bomb. Yeah, so, like, you know, but they was using title match rules. I Pretty sure he could have, he would want, well, I'm basically trying to say he would won every match because he was basically up by at least two or three points versus everybody after the first round. But I did with title match rules because that was a whole entire team. I was trying to decide how I was going, who was I going to put in that entire team. And they was going to be together throughout the whole entire tournament, win, lose, or draw, or if somebody messes up or wherever. So, like, that's what was going on with that. All right, he wins his first match. I'm not going to talk during the next matches, so. though. Alright. Yeah, that didn't take long. Well, it started at three minutes, so yeah, it did take a little bit of time. See what I was saying in the last video. Yeah, he lost to all four of them, but I was but reason reason that um I just said no I'll just keep him off that team because if it comes down to the championship and like he keep on losing by blood stoppage, like he may have just cost his team the match. So like that's why I just took him off or whatever. But I did change it so that he rarely bleeds and stuff like that so he probably was still the better chance if I had redid that five man league with those four guys but like I don't care about that that's over with and now you know we got who's going to be on there for that but like now that he rarely bleeds it also can help him for because if his team because I may I don't know why the fuck I'm still keeping him on that team. I should just put somebody else on there. But I want the best capable teams to win, you know, and like me taking him off this team may hinder their chances of winning because there's a bunch of good teams going to the round of eight. There's at least five different teams on there that's legit who can definitely win this or whatever. But like if I could find somebody better to replace them, why not? Yeah. So yeah, after this match, I'ma have somebody who lost go up against the guy, the fifth guy, who doesn't, who hasn't had a match yet, and that's how I'll do it, and I'll keep whoever's without losses going against people with losses and stuff like that, and that's how we'll do this, you know, until we can find out who is the top ones and stuff, so if somebody has a loss, then like, they can face whoever, you know.
he's finna lose this match because he's basically, you know, got the league on points. You gotta get a knockdown or something or try to get some rope escapes by doing some submissions, but with these one rounders being only three minutes, you don't have enough time to do none of that. And he's the better guy when it comes to doing takedowns anyway, but he got three more matches to try to do something. But now, this guy was just, uh, he was just countering his grappling and he was doing his own grapples. He ain't gonna have enough time unless he could, unless he got a takedown in his arsenal that does also knock down damage. He ain't got enough time. Yep, he definitely ain't got enough time. It's gonna lose to him by points. I said I wasn't gonna talk, but I did it anyway. Oh well. You know what? Since this this matters, but it don't really matter because it's not actually part of the the actual tournament I'm gonna do some commentary so yeah I'm gonna try to see what I can do with commentary for these since they don't count as like you know part of the tournament and stuff like that so I'm gonna do commentary to see how well I can do it because I may want to start doing that in the future alright the match has started red quark Black pants. He he did a um, European uppercut. Some taunts going on. Some evasion going on. He blocked that kick. That he countered, took the back, and now he has the rear naked choke. He's trying to wear down his head. Tie up. Another European uppercut. All right. Some more taunting going on by the both of them. They're not engaging yet. Hits them with a hard body strike. Or strong body shot. No, I'm going to say heavy strikes. Yeah. They come strong and weak attacks, but I said, let's say heavy. Now he's doing his strikes. Alright. His meter bar is rising right now, so his energy bar is getting stronger. Oh, until he got counter record. He countered knee into a takedown. Damn, he uses... What's that? Low sleep sweeping kick? The low sweeping side kick to knock him out the ring. And now they're both taunted some more. Not really too much going on here. The guy in the black pants, he got to watch out for that hard body shot to the body. That's his go-to weapon. And that's how he got the majority of his wins in that 12-man match. Well, not well. yeah. The majority of them came from there because he just kept on letting that body shot and, like, it does knockdown damage. And, like, that was the most effective move throughout that thing as far as, like, getting knockdowns. Nothing else was more... Let's get more knockdowns to that body strike that he does during that 12 man league. He probably was, yeah, I can say that. He was the most efficient striker in that 12 man league, and now he's doing some ground and pound. He's going for the arm bar, he gets it, but he doesn't get the rope escape. Somebody needs to gain some type of points, but I think the guy in the white. He's more likely going to be able to capture this victory because he's done the most of the damage to this match so far. He's not doing some more ground and pound. Going for another arm bar. I don't think he's going to get the rope escape again. They're running out of time. Guy in the black pants, he needs to get a knockdown, I believe, in order to stand the chances. Of this. But now... Not only, not knockdown, excuse me, but he needed to get some type of points, but now he ain't gonna be able to get nothing and he's probably gonna lose. Oh, he was able to counter his ground and pound and knock him off him. Good for him. 
but it's a little too late for the both of them unless he can hit this body shot nope that was the wrong one he went for a weak body shot instead of that heavy one to the body but he was on points because he controlled the majority of the bench or in any case he did the most damage you know I think that's how it works I got I wonder if I look on crowds that they show anything with nope can't let them two face off yet they're both undefeated now let's move on to this yeah this right here these two can face off that's how we'll do it and if we have to we'll have them all face off at the very end alright starts off he gets a strike on him a weak strike on him and then he gets the takedown he scored the first points with a double unhook suplex and he does double underhook snap suplex and he gets some points so now they're tied on points he went he got the full mount and went for the arm bar he does the rising shoulder tackle that knocks him out the ring they're both doing a little bit of taunting he goes for a kick gets a counter to catch it he does some version of a spinning leg takedown or or dragon screw he's doing his strikes mm. I think that was four of the elbow four of the elbow smashes with two of the um, jumping back kicks alright not really much going on some more countering going on by Alexander the guy in pink oh he was able to get another snap double underhook suplex double underhook belly to belly suplex that's what they've been going for my bad I say belly to belly more striking going on. Wow. Wow. Some more striking and carrying going on, on the part of both of them. So far a decent mess, but they only got one minute left now. He gets the double leg takedown. He goes into another arm bar. I don't think he's nobody's nowhere near close to being taken out by submission but his arm is injured so he could possibly get another rope escape if he goes for one he count that kick with another takedown doing some more ground and pound from back control and now he goes for a rear naked choke, didn't get no rope escape right there. Goes for the release belly to back soup, the release German suplex. And he gets the, not only did he get the point for the takedown, he also got the knockdown from that particular German suplex as well. So he received three points ending the match with only 24 seconds to go. So congrats to him, he is now 2-0. Nope, like I said, we're not doing that yet, so I guess, yeah, we could do this right here. Have those two go at it. Star off with a little bit of taunting. The low drop kick is blocked. 
The heavy low drop kick is blocked. Leg was caught, but he manages to give free using the Instagram. Tie up, he took the back, and then he hit him with some, with the multiple head parts to the back of the head. His rising attack didn't work. Kicks him in the stomach. And now he's going for a, a vertical suplex, but it's counter and he gets one. He receives one instead. Finally, he lands his tank down. He has the first points on the board. And counter suplexes only count if it's like countering like off a of back take. Like, let's say you and somebody tie up and you counter them by like switching to their back then that suplexes count because you're in control like you see just now like that or whatever got some more shots to the back of the head the both tie on points oh belly to belly overhead throw suplex Belly to belly overhead, I should say. Yeah. Some strikes. All of them are going to the body. But one of them gets cut and he gets taken down. But that was a counter off a of strike, so it doesn't do no knockdown damage. Well, it was a counter off of the. Well, that count. When you counter that particular knee strike to the body it doesn't do it but like any of the other counter catch kicks to take down that would do that um single leg slam the single leg slam which is definitely does a takedown some more striking going on by the both of them he's trying to go for another suplex to get himself an even more league yep he's up by two but his opponent, the one in the white pants, he's never out of anything, as you can see, because if that body shot lands, that automatically does two points. So, yeah, if he can land that knockdown with that body shot, this match is definitely not over. You got to either stay away from him or try to look for another takedown. Because if you can get another takedown, that body shot is basically not gonna be worth anything last five seconds can he get the body shot nope he can't Grass says earlier he has his first points you should have been going for that the whole entire match he got the match to get some type of points on the board but Grass Alexander from the oh red corner he was in the red corner I thought he was I thought he was on the right side all right. Coming up next, we have this match. Let's get ready to go on. Let's see who wins this. I'm horrible at commentary. Uh, I, I did just wake up at like 11. Just in time for the new year or whatever. Oh. I should have went out. No. Top four. Yeah. Alright. First points on the board. Be a vertical suplex. Some striking and counting going on. Some hard strikes and around a shoulder block. Got counter to a, a leg sweep. Or what? No, that was a drop toe hole. Yeah, drop toe hole. Yeah. Then he hits his strikes. He lands all six of them. He's going for some more strikes. Let's see if he lands all of them. Alright, the fifth one was counter, but the sixth one lands and knocked down his opponent. He's hitting another takedown on him. He's going to have to try to do something about 
them points. Yeah, he's going to have to start doing some submissions and try to get some knockdowns or try to go for his own, you know, takedowns. Because in the one round fight, being down by points can be costly if you're not able to use anything to catch me up. Oh yeah, he's going to need a whole bunch of stuff. Or he's going to need to get his finisher to submit him and get this victory. Yeah. Yeah, you go ahead to start to do something, some taunts or something. Because right now it's looking like he ain't going to be able to win this match. Unless he gets the finish or start getting ropes escapes. Like, the quicker you can injure somebody, for a reason, the computer, they'll automatically do the rope escape as soon as they injure, but they won't rope escape when it's but they're down to their last bit of um, points. So since warp, rope escapes are worth one point, when they get to one, they're gonna stop using rope escape. You know, they're just gonna have to get submitted then. Oh man, this is looking like it's all over for him. He's under a minute now. Finna be under 30 seconds. He still has to score the point gonna lose to him on points or he could possibly get all the points taken away there's enough time where he could get at least two more takedowns but the one thing I keep on forgetting is we do have blood stoppage but I haven't seen that with this 12 man thing at all I haven't seen nobody really like cutting by open in this um in 12 man league and it hasn't happened yet in this five man week right now. Yeah. We're gonna have to go we're gonna we're gonna do one more video then we're gonna have to stop this because we're already at thirty minutes. It's at twenty seven minutes I'm pretty sure the next match will give us give us over thirty minutes. Alright, so yeah, it doesn't matter who he's face off with now, because he has the most points. And or should I make him face off with the guy at the bottom? Eh, it don't matter. Alright, so this will be the last match of this video. Then we'll come back to this and continue with the next one. Or you know what? We'll just go on until this is all done with. Just do it all in one big ass video. It don't matter. Yeah. Don't matter. So yeah, this is going to continue. Oh, he starts off with the spinning back elbow to get a knockdown for two points. Oh, didn't see that coming. Look like Devastation is going to be a part of that team after all. He's definitely doing well in this. So far, he's undefeated with two wins. He's trying to go for his third right here. And as I said before, if you don't know, Devastation is based off of the movie character from off of Undisputed series. The second, third, I think he got his own. The fourth one was just basically about him. Um. What's it called? The uh, Undisputed 2? I forget what that was. Undisputed 2. It was basically the movie where it was um, Scott Atkins, the guy who plays Yuri Boyka. He was going, he was fighting um, Chambers, who was played by Michael J. White in prison. You know, the prison fights. And then the third one was just a tournament using. A um, martial artist, the winner gets to go free, and like I forget how I forget what his real name is, but like you had Turbo, who was the who was a black guy who was a boxer. You had um, dang, he won on points that time. He did the double underhook snap, belly to belly suplex. 
and he not only got the knockdown, he not only got the takedown, my bad, but he also got the knockdown as well. Yeah, that movie was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Turbo was a black guy who was a boxer. We, you had the um the guy who was always in martial arts movies doing Capoeira, which is Brazilian dance fighting. He did the um he was in that movie as well and I don't know I don't know what he who he is. I forget his real name in real life because he's done a ton of movies and he always doing like the cocker the uh, fight choreography for his movies, but the guy who played Dolore, the Colombian guy, he was in the movie, he was actually the final fight, he was the favorite to win the whole entire thing, and like, they had their fight, and like, he ended up winning, but like, he lost to, um, Boykai, because his leg got broken, and then they had a, there's a fourth movie that's pretty good as well. Basically, just look up Undisputed 2, Undisputed 3, Undisputed 4. The first one doesn't have, doesn't have Yuri Boycock in it at all because it's about the American prison system with fighting, but they do boxing, you know, and like it was between Vin Reigns and the Undisputed champ of prison boxing, Wesley Snipes. I forget the name of their, cam the name of their characters, but I know that. Bill Ray's character was named Chambers as well. So, yep, this is the next match we got coming up. These two are for the face off. They're both from rings. Yeah, so that type of stuff. And I think we already found who the winner is. Wait, now this guy. The, the fifth guy, he has a chance of winning it all. Yeah, I forgot. He has a chance of winning it all. I forgot which one of them is number five. I don't know who's number five, because number five is the guy from the blue corner. Oh. If somebody gets the points, I'll know who number five is. I'm pretty sure it's the guy in the white pants, but I could be wrong. I don't know for sure once somebody gets some points. Because the, the red corner is the it's the guy on the um what's the on the left side where you see the red corner you know ring post and the and the one that's opposite of it is the blue corner, which is usually reserved for the challenger, which is in the, the blue ring post. Then you got a white one and you got a black one, I think. They're going to show the... Damn it, I thought they were going to show the ring post right quick. They'll do it right now. No, they won't be able to show it because it's going to end up damage being done. Well, if they move over there near it, I can see it. I think it's black. They are doing a bunch of countering with their strikes and stuff. That palm thrust. You know, the fact that you can count that into an armbar. I don't understand why, because it's such a strike. It's such a straight strike or whatever like that. It's going straight at the opponent. So I don't know why. Oh, they're both gray. Or white or whatever. Yeah, they're both gray. I didn't know those two ring posters were gray. I thought one was black and the other one was white. To have four different color ring posters. But I guess they one is gray and the other one's I guess those two being gray are gray because like usually it's just one on one matches and like the Japanese pro wrestling they try to make their shit look as similar to like actual combat fighting as it can be, you know. They actually treat it like it's combat fighting, even though you know it's just like any other ones. Except for they do hit a little bit harder with their matches, as in every match, they're stiff as hell when they do their strikes. Stiff meaning like 
you know, you're trying to land flush a lot of the time when you strike. May get a rope escape. Nope. Well, I think if he does that one more time, we'll get a rope escape for some points. Oh, he got the gills here. Oh, that was able to get some points. Okay. You know, winning this. And that means that the white pants was the blue corner, and that means, yep, we already know who won. We only need to see the last matches. Look at that. We already got a decision. Nobody's capable of beating him because he's 3 and 0 and everybody else is got two losses so if everybody else has two losses there's no way anybody can beat him but we're going to do this right quick with Yep, we're going to do these two right quick, and I'll do the last match anyway. See if anybody can beat them. It's a constellation prize. You know. Well, at least everybody got points. You know. Everybody did get points. God damn it. Should know he was going to win against them. Well, it looked like, well, I guess it's not that bad. I want him to be part of the fifth spot chance again for the MMA division, but I guess this is not so bad because this is actually a difficult tournament because you got the team of four um, of my crabs on here. You got the other team that's with legends who are all um, the MMA legends. You got that team that's stacked also with there being um, Gary Albright, Big Van Vader, Stan Hansen, and um, what's he called? Bruiser Brody. Yeah, that team is stacked. You got the um, team that consists of what is it? Who's, what team am I thinking of right now? God damn it. Oh yeah, of uh, the um, pancreas people. Yeah, all four of them are for pancreas. I think um, was it Musa Katsu? He's the only one who's actually with a ranking. I, I think yeah, he's the only one with a ranking for um. Uh, what was what's that? The MMA division. I'm not sure. I think he's either rank hunter or wild card. Wow, he's wild card. Yeah, he's definitely wild card. Yeah. Because um, he fought um, Boom at show 5C. Yeah, and he lost. So, yeah, he's definitely the wild card for the um, MMA division. And he's going to go against the fifth spot, who is Mark Kerr at show. What's that? 6B? Yeah, 6B. Yeah. And while I'm talking, goddamn, I believe, yeah, Alexander is doing the damn thing. He, he is for the win this on points if he gets one more takedown. Oh, got counter right there with the big boot to the face. And does he win it on points? Yep. Five points to one. He is your winner. And he was the, even though I did all the matches off screen, like, where his name is, um, um, the guy with the white pants you saw earlier, let me see, which one was he, yeah, number five, yeah, we're gonna continue, there's only one more match, yeah, number five right here, the guy who's number five, in that 12 minute thing, he got the most knockdowns because he just kept on getting points off of knockdowns from that body shot. So he's the most consistent with getting knockdowns by using his body strike, the heavy body blow. 
and then the guy you just saw, number four, Alexander. He was the he was the only person who was winning by taking away all of his opponent's points. I don't think nobody else took away the whole that all their opponent's points in that 12-man league except for him. And he got both, and I think he did that on two or three of his opponents. I know it was definitely two of them, but it possibly was the third one. And he just did it just here, just now. And I think a few people got submission victories. At least two people had submission victories, but I think one person had more than one. Yeah. All right, this is the final one, and Devastation was the winner of it. He's automatically the winner. We could just skip this, but I'm going to show it anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to keep him a part of that team, and I'm going to make him the fifth, the fourth guy for that team, like he's already set to be. Because they, I like, I was thinking, like, man, since I didn't want him in it, I was going to, like, replace him with somebody because, like, their team actually won, and they need to utilize him. I think they only use it. They only use three of their people to win in the um, round of 16. So I was like, you know what? They even need him. So like, they don't need him. Let me just figure out somebody to replace him with. But it turns out nobody's good enough to replace him. <laughs> As you can see, he's already down to only two points versus this opponent, and he almost got him with another spinning back elbow. Got that running, jumping knee strike right there. Double leg takedown. Mounted punches. Full mount punches. Switch it to arm bar. Didn't get the rope escape. He's going to have to hit him with a body shot. I swear. And my one thing with the um, multiple strike thing, I like that a lot, but like, I wish they would. Dang, is it all over? Nope, he got one point left. I wish they would um, more often let them go for some of their, um, you know, grapples. Like, go for, you know, like if you're going for the strikes, unless you're just somebody who just like to do the striking, yeah, you use all six, but don't use all six every time. Like, go for like three or four of them and then go for a grapple or go for five of them they always go for like a grapple with the very last one like you do when you get your finisher because we you got your finisher you're not going to just go for ten strikes you're going to go for as many as possible probably eight or nine of them and then the final one is always the, the finisher move but they don't do that unless it's like that there's rare occasions where somebody would go for a, go for a grapple after they do like the five strike they use the final one for like a grapple, but that's rare. And like, it needs to be a little bit more unpredictable with that stuff. Oh. Jumping, what's that called? I think that's, that's the same thing as the, oh yeah. It's called fast spinning wheel kick. Fast spinning wheel kick. Yeah, fast spinning wheel kick. And he gets the win. He took away all the points again. With the quick with over a minute to spare. Okay. So that's the devastation. He wins this. I'm gonna screenshot it right here. Cause you can see their numbers in the back. Okay. Great for him. Oh damn. Well, I didn't have to do nothing with that, man. We already saw there was devastation anyway, you know? So, I don't need to do none of that. So, what time is it? Damn, it's already 4 o'clock. Well, I only got four matches to record, so... That probably won't be that bad. And I won't be doing shady commentary during those matches. At all. So let's put this back the way it was, the way I had it. I thought somebody was going to replace them and I was going to make them come out second for this team, but the station's still here. And get caress to him. Because him and Antonio Noki, they was both part of the MMA division and who was it? It was him, Antonio Noki, and what was it? Mark Kerr and like 
they had a they they was tied on points and they had to go into a final tiebreaker league. I put them on in because the fifth spot was in me me no rule to not to Naka and like since he was a part of it you know since he was a part of the three way tie I had them just do a three way lead and they all face off with each other again and Devastation the worst thing about that was Devastation kept on losing to goddamn Mark Kerr the Smash Machine because he will cut him early in the match like early in the match and like would never be able to recover after he cut him because his reaction to blood is aggression and like he'll just finish he'll just get his finisher because he's bleeding or whatever and like he's aggressive now so like he'll be bleeding and like he'll just build his finisher so quickly and he'll just win by his finisher or win by um some type of submission you know yeah because his finisher is the double leg takedown into full mount and then he does ultimate punches and stuff like that. So I was like, man, like damn. So like, that's what that's why devastation is not the freaking fifth spot <laughs> in the MMA division because the goddamn the smashing machine Mark Kerr beat him twice, <laughs> beat him merciful, mercilessly, mercilessly, yeah. Yeah, mercilessly twice. Uh, but I still got faith in him that he can one day be the champion of the MMA division. Shit, that was just a singles combatist championship. He would, he'll be the damn champion. Huh? He just destroyed all, all four of them. He destroyed all four of them. You know? No match was, well, one of them. No, it was close for a second that he made sure he had enough points. Yeah. None of them went to time decision. He won by points with, I think, two of them. And, like, one of them he just cleared off all. The last two, he definitely cleared off all the points. So congrats to him. He's going to keep his spot. And coming up next will be. Oh, we can finally put this on here. So let me screenshot this right quick. We finally can put this out. I'll, I'll screenshot it afterward. So yeah, congrats to Devastation. He's gonna still be a part of this team, and we're gonna be starting the round of eight for crying the first ever combatants champions. Uh, I guess we could do it today, and like if it if it lasts to like five or six. If it lasts to like 8 or 9 o'clock, it just lasts to like 8 or 9 o'clock. Alright, till the next video, later.